how you can actually study well and efficiently so I don't burn out in college, but I'm also able to get good grades. So who am I? My name is Adam Nessel. I am the founder of The Pre-Med Consultants. I graduated from Cornell with over 4.0 GPA, over 4.0 because they have A pluses, but just, I don't know if your school does A pluses, but if they do, AMC, the AMCAS application, they'll drop those all down to A, so it doesn't count. Um, and over the 90th percentile on the MCAT, and I'm a fourth year medical student at Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Some of you might have seen me on social media. I'm not sure, I'm actually curious, has anyone seen any of my videos on social media, like TikTok or Instagram? Can I see in the chat? Okay, yeah. I, I'm always curious how far those reach at this point. <laughs> awesome, awesome. But the reality is, this was not always the case. The first test I ever got, took as a pre-med student, I actually got a 68 and it was on my comparative physiology exam. And coming from a, a high school that was pretty challenging, but I got straight A's there, then going to college and getting a 68 on my first exam, it was definitely a wake up call. And I don't know if, if any of you have experienced the same thing, but once you get to pre-med and college, it's a whole nother ball game and you really always have, you have to keep upping how you study and the different study strategy, how hard you're working and the different study strategies that you're actually using. So what, so basically what happened was after that, I realized, all right, what I'm doing is clearly not working. I got to figure out how you can actually study well and efficiently. So I don't burn out in college, but I'm also able to get good grades. And so I really started diving into the actual literature of how to learn and, and tactics that you can use to make you a better student and uh, apply this specifically to pre-meds and I've been teaching these ever since. And for whatever reason, learning how to learn is never actually taught. So people do a lot, a lot of students will do trial and error and changing up their study habits for each class. But there are some tried and true principles that no matter who you are, will help you improve your studying and, and get better grades. And I know there, there's a lot of uh, people who will say, oh, well, I'm a visual learner, I'm an auditory learner, etc." There are still some principles that for every person are going to work. And so that's what, what we're going to go over. So the first thing is to start your semester strong. And you need to do that by one, getting ahead in your classes. Most students wait to get the syllabus and to get assigned work to start actually studying for their class. If you can just do the one minor thing of a week out from class, you start studying the first, let's say three lectures, and then you're always three lectures ahead, that will give you so much breathing room. This is one of the ways I know I saw someone before say that would be the dream where you can actually feel less stressed as a pre-med because if you start off ahead, it's easier to maintain being ahead in class. And then if something does go wrong where something comes up, you actually have a little bit of breathing room so that it's not the end of the world if you can't study for a couple of days. So if you actually make this a part of your routine, a lot of students will be like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And then it's like syllabus week and then they go out and and there goes getting ahead. If you can actually just get ahead, just a couple lectures, three, four lectures in the beginning and start reviewing those notes beforehand, then you actually come in knowing more than most of your peers. And even if, basically we'll talk about space repetition in a second, but even if you just self-study some of the first couple lectures and use the those lectures then as the second pass of that material, what that does is makes it so you, one, are paying more attention when you're actually in class because it's a lot harder to pay attention when you really have no clue what's going on. So if you know what's going on, you end up paying attention. So then that second pass is already stronger. And then you don't have to go and actually, what I'm sure some of you do, who here zones out during class and then really you're like, oh, I'll go learn this later tonight. And then that's really your first pass through the information. Let me see in the chat if you've ever done that. <laughs> yeah. We're getting a lot of agreement, especially during Zoom lectures. Exactly, yeah, it can, it can definitely be tough. But I, I, I will say, I, I know many, many students who have done the exact same, even when it was in live lectures, so. Number two, start practice exams after a few weeks. So this is another thing that students do not utilize in their pre-med classes is the practice exams that are given, like let's say practice midterm or practice final. Does anyone know, can I see in the chat, what is the purpose of a practice exam? Practice exams allow you to identify your weaknesses a lot better than anything else you will do. A lot of students don't actually study their weaknesses. You study just this e equally all the information that you're getting and you're doing it in chronologic order. The problem with that is some of you will be better at some topics than others and you won't even realize it until you do the practice exam four days before the real thing 
And what a lot of you will do is they, you use a practice exam to see what score you're probably gonna get on the real exam. That's not what we wanna use practice exams for. We wanna use it as one to, to get familiar with how the questions will be tested so that you can figure out how, especially for that specific class, you're gonna be tested so you can study accordingly, but also to figure out where you're weak early on so that you can start studying it at that point and not four days before when you take the practice exam and you're like, all right, well, I got a lot of work to do. Does that make sense? And someone said, this is a huge, for MCAT prep, exactly. So we have actually, and I'll get to this in a bit, when I talk about MCAT strategy, but we have students doing practice questions from day one of their MCAT prep, which is very rare. Most programs or people, students that self-study, they'll do like three months of content review, realize they forgot half of that content review, and then start practice questions. Awesome. All right, so third is to use space re repetition. So this is something that I kind of knew what space repetition was as a pre-med, but I never knew how to use it effectively with my studying. And the best way that I do it now, have all my pre-med students do, and you'll see almost everyone use in medical school, is something called Anki. Does everyone know, or does anyone know what Anki is? See, most students, when I was a pre-med, didn't even know what Anki was. That's why MCAT score averages are rising, probably. <laughs> All right, cool. So Anki is basically a space repetition platform that shows you information when you're most likely to forget it. So what that allows you to do is constantly study your weak areas and pushes it farther and farther into your long-term memory. So if you're studying for a class using Anki from day one, all you have to do, I'm not kidding, is 30 minutes to 45 minutes of Anki a day for that class and you will have almost all the information memorized by the time you even get into your uh, like dedicated study period for the test. Because I know a lot of you will only start studying really a week before or something like that. So if you do Anki and you, you incorporate that as part of your studying, you will, no joke, have almost all of it memorized before you even actually start studying for that final. And that is where we get to the ability to go out, do things that you want, be less stressed because you're keeping up with the class and you're constantly repeating the information, so space that, again, what space repetition is, is seeing that information multiple, multiple times so that it's going farther and farther into your long-term memory. If you want help with that, let us know and you can click the link below and schedule a call with me or someone from my team and we can go over our entire program and how we actually help students do that. But if not, I hope you got a lot of value from this video and I'll see you in the next one.